Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm planting four new things in my garden, three of which I have never grown before. So this is gonna be a completely new experience for me. So if any of you have grown any of these things, let me know your experience in the comment section. And then the fourth thing I have grown a version of, but this is a new variety for me. So I've got everything loaded up in the back of the gator right here. And I thought I'd run through each one of these things before I actually go out into the garden. So I found a nice shady spot underneath the ash tree to do that. So the first one is called a double white meadow sweet. You can see this one is in full bloom. I think I've got eight of them here to plant. The leaves are very fine and delicate looking, kind of almost fern-esque. And then the bloom stalks shoot up higher than the canopy. And this one at maturity grows about two feet tall by 18 inches wide. But take a close up look at these blooms. Double white, almost kind of baby's breath-esque, don't you think? And I guess these make an excellent cut flower. And that was the original reason. I had two reasons I wanted to plant this plant. One, because of the blooms. They're beautiful, um, they're a good filler flower, and they're a really good cut flower, but also I wanted it for the moon garden. But the more I've been researching this plant, the more I'm thinking it needs to go somewhere where it's a little bit more protected from harsh sun. Um, it does like very moist soil, so that's easy to tackle in our garden. I'll just make sure that each one of these plants has either a drip tube really close by or an emitter run right to it. Um, but I just don't know that it's going to tolerate our full harsh sun in the moon garden over there. So I think I'll find a new place for this one. Um, the botanical name is Philip, Philip Bendula. I don't know if that's how you say it. Vulgaris Flora Pleno. Zone three, zone three, so hardy down to negative 40 and it starts blooming in June and flowers over a very long period of time. And it, its best performance is when it's in a moist situation. So if you have a very boggy situation, um, I guess this is a really good one. It's also known as a uh, queen of the meadow. And I guess it is a noxious weed in a lot of Midwestern kind of states. So definitely something to check into. I don't know if every variety is like that or if it's like the common variety of meadow sweet is noxious. So I, I mean, we'll see what happens here, I doubt. It, it won't get the conditions it needs here to flourish as a noxious weed, I don't think. So anyway, this one will be a fun experiment, but the blooms are so beautiful. The next one is this big guy right here. I've got two of these. These are called Acanthus mollus. Check out, this is not a good example. I broke that leaf, but look at these long leaves and I guess they can get up to like a couple feet long really bold, really like almost thistle-esque looking foliage, but they're very soft. They're not stickery in the slightest and they produce a huge, beautiful bloom stalk. And my second one over here is starting to bloom. Let me pull it down here. So gorgeous. The first time I ever saw this plant was when we were in England one year and we were touring one of the estates that had beautiful gardens. And I, I think I took pictures of it and I had no idea what it was um, because these are, this particular variety anyway, is a zone six. And we were just moved into a zone six from a zone five. So even though like on the lower end, I think they're a zone six through 10, you still have to mulch them through the winter. I got away with planting Agapanthus and the variety I planted last year was a zone seven and it came back this year after I mulched it up really high with leaves. So it's something I'll do with this one as well. But I'm hoping that this one takes in our garden because they really do create this gorgeous, huge statement of a plant. This is kind of the same thing too. Here's the tag, full sun to part shade, um, but they do prefer a spot that gets a little bit of protection where summers are really harsh. Three to five feet tall, three to four feet wide. That's like a huge shrub right there. So I'm gonna have to make sure to give this plenty of space to kind of spread out. In fact, I may not even put these two together. I might put them in separate areas of the garden just to see what kind of luck I have. And because they get so big, you don't really need multiples of them in order for it to be striking. Now, I don't know if this is how it's gonna be in my garden, but I did read that some varieties can be a little bit erratic in their performance in that like one year they'll bloom beautifully and huge. And then the next year it'll be a little bit like not as good. And then the year after it could be awesome. Um, so it's not like something every year that you can count on. And I don't know what my experience is gonna be with that. So I'd love to know those of you who grow this, what your experience is. 
Um, but I do know that they're drought tolerant once, once they're established, which is really wonderful. And they're not heavy feeders. So it's something like today, they do like to start out in a rich soil. So I have, I'm actually sitting on a bag of land and sea compost right now. So I don't get my pants all wet because the grass is wet. Um, and so I'm gonna amend the area around where I am planting these today so that they start off rich. And then I know I can, I can go along like once a year and give them like some plant tone or flower tone if they look like they need it. But I like low maintenance like that. The next one is a gonfo carpus. I've got three four inch containers. They're a type of annual milkweed. So you can see the leaves here and kind of the long stalk. They grow about four by two, which is pretty significant. They're also known as a goose plant or a giant swan plant or scandalous. So we're gonna call them gonfo carpus. I just thought that they would be really interesting in the moon garden because they produce white flowers and then they're followed by the incredibly interesting looking seed pods. I read online, one of the pros online was that they create an amazing table centerpiece with their seed pods. I don't know if it'd be an amazing centerpiece or a conversation piece, who knows, but we're gonna try it out this year. Um, I do know that they're a really good nectar source for monarch butterflies and they can withstand a lot of monarch caterpillars feeding on the plant, especially later on in the season. And they are one of the latest milkweeds um, that are a viable source for feed for monarchs late in the season before fall hits. So anyway, they've got a lot of interesting uh, benefits to them. And so I thought, I saw them down at the garden center and I was like, oh my, I've never heard of that plant before. We're gonna give that one a shot. And the very last one, this is called Big Blue Sea Holly. I have some experience growing this type of plant. It's a type of Eryngium, that's a botanical name, but not this exact variety. I started a variety called White Glitter from Seed this winter and it's planted out in the landscape right now. The leaves are completely different. So the leaves on this one are definitely thistle-like and they are definitely pokey. So I'm hoping I don't regret this decision, but the blooms are amazing. They do this and then they look like this for the rest of the season. They dry exactly how they look. So you can use them in cut flower arrangements or dried arrangements or wreaths or whatever decorating projects you have going on. And they maintain that beautiful look. Um, and that's the main reason why I wanted to have some of these. And I'm gonna put some of them in an area in the back that I deal with water issues. Even though I have drip run to the area, somehow I deal with water issues and I think this plant will handle that sort of situation. So all of that said, let me show you the back of this gator and then we are going to go plant. So here it all is. It's a big sea of green right now, but back here, all the Eryngium, my two Acanthus, my three Gonfo Carpus, and then the rest are the Meadow Sweet and my kneeling pad of sorts. So I'm in the formal garden space right now, and this is the flower bed where I've had just so many issues. You might remember this is the fence that that guy drove through that one time. It was oh, two years ago, two and a half years ago. So our driveway comes in over here, and this guy came through speeding at like 45, came through, he missed all of this, like he got through here, he drove through the grass, and just barreled through the fence right here. Went through there, this is our neighbor's uh, tennis court, area went through all of that and then down further down until his car stopped anyway it was quite the excitement for the day but this whole bed has been an issue not because of that but just i don't know why i don't know if it's the soil or the drip system um we ran new drip in this bed so there is two lines of drip that run here now we've tested it and all sorts of things so anyway my hope is that this eryngium it's such a, t a tough plant I'm hoping it does well back here and it can just kind of fill in this spot right here. I do feel like I need to put something like with a yellow tone or maybe something, I don't know, I've got the black lace elderberry, the blue spruce that we transplanted that's doing well, and then the green grass. So maybe something more vibrant right in here before the eryngium starts. So anyway, I'm gonna get these planted. Gloves are a must for these plants. And there they are, not looking like a lot right now, <laughs> but they will 
be gorgeous, especially once all of them are in color and they're a tiny bit wilty because they do need to be watered as well. It's fairly hot and windy out right now, but that's 16 of them right there. And I left enough room on this side to kind of start another drift of something in front so that the Orangium will tuck back in behind whatever else we decide to put in this space here. Same over here. So see how I kind of like graduate the drift back so I can start something in front so it's not like, you know, squares of plants. And I do need to tack the drip down and add a little bit more mulch in this space, but I think I'm gonna plant this area first before I do that. So anyway, let's move on to the acanthus. I actually think one of these would be beautiful about where that brown pot is right there. Yeah, I think if I scooch the pot, maybe if I scooch the pot in here and have it a little bit more tucked in, and have the acanthus about where that is, I think that would be gorgeous. Hopefully the drip tubing that's going to that pot will reach where I wanna put it. It can fill in this space right here. Oh yeah, that is perfect, especially once it fills in this whole area and it sends up bloom stalks. It'll be protected in the afternoon, shaded by this arborvita right here. Now I did skip the land and sea compost in this area because this spot has really good soil. There's earthworms all over in it. So I just skipped that step because I didn't want to do too much around the plant, but I did give it some starter fertilizer as I did with the sea holly as well. I kind of forgot this pot was back here. I need to plant it. Dang, just have a few plants left, really. So up in the front garden area, I think the meadow sweet would be beautiful planted in a drift through here. Just kind of that ferny texture with the white blooms that needed something like that, I think. Brother Stefan Clematis right there. So since this plant likes a lot of moisture, this area does have drip tubing that runs through it, but there's a tree right above that does utilize a lot of the water. So the way I am going to get around it is by popping an extra half gallon per hour emitter right into the tubing next to each one of these meadow sweet plants. So something like that right there. You can see this zone is actually on right now. So it's perfect. And I think it looks really sweet right in here. It has kind of that woodland-esque look, which really the rest of this bed with the ferns in it over there, the hookerellas and the hostas, I think it's a perfect blend. All right, all I have left is the one acanthus and the three gonfocarpus. And I have to admit, it's also kind of nice to be planting some of these things instead of having to water them every single day in the greenhouse, because I've got like, you know, a little plant hoard that I gathered over the course of the spring and I just haven't had a chance to get everything planted. So this is always really nice to get them in the ground, make sure each one of them has emitters run to them so that hopefully I don't ever have to even string a hose out to water them. <sighs> That's the ideal situation anyway. Okay. I think I wanna tuck the three of these milkweeds in somewhere down here on the end of the west side, preferably somewhere where I know they'll have a little bit of protection maybe even a tiny bit of shade at the end of the day, which I'm guessing is gonna be right in this area. There's a birch tree right overhead. All the other perennials are looking really good. Blue kazoo spirea, the daisies, the white wands of Veronica. Yeah, thinking right back in there, it's perfect. Yeah, those fit in perfect right there. And this is where the last acanthus is going, kind of in the front kitchen flower bed here. Lemon zest roses looking particularly beautiful. 
Winecraft black smoke bush. There is a red point maple that shades this area, protects it in the afternoon a little bit, and it will do so even more as it grows. But I think it's gonna be gorgeous right here. Kind of need that bulk and that texture right there. I'm also noticing that this drip system is currently running because I see a leak, but I happen to have my kit with me, so I'll get that fixed as well. Look at this rose. So beautiful. And the incredible hydrangeas are just loaded. It's going to be a glorious show this year. I'm also wondering if there's another sort of issue in this area because this is looking a little bit too soggy. Hmm. And I have to figure out what's going on there or plant a bog plant. One of the two. That looks awesome. I think that's the perfect plant for this area. I think that the bloom color on the acanthus right here, check that out, is super like well matched with the smoke bush. I don't know if you guys can see the detail there, but it's so beautiful. Now this area, other than the hydrangeas and the lemon zest roses and uh, the smoke bush, I've got some pink poppies. A few of them are doing well. A few of them have kind of fizzled out primarily in this space. So I'm hoping that there's nothing wrong in this area and that this one does okay. Um, but I may go in and direct seed more poppies next year because I think that that would be pretty to have a thick stand of poppies. And then typically I come in with some sort of annual flower of some kind. I'm gonna have to figure out something that likes a lot of wet because this is a pretty wet area. I didn't think, I thought that I skipped it with drip because you can see a drip line there and then a drip line coming right here. I don't think there's any drip there, but we get a lot of overspray from the lawn sprinklers in this area. And there's the agapanthus that have come back, which is really exciting. So anyway, it's just slowly taking shape one type of plant at a time. And that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, just seeing all these new plants. Well, three of them are brand new to me. I've never grown them before. There's so many plants out there and it's always fun to try a small handful of them every year. And that's how I learn is just by doing it, by planting them, seeing how it goes. Sometimes I have a really good luck. I have really good luck with them and sometimes I don't. So like I said in the beginning of this video, if any of you have grown these things and have any tips or tricks, I am all ears. I would love to learn from your guys' experience as well. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.